quanta and quasi crystals with dual harmonics. What a quanta! Think of the hydrogen atom, think of Schrodinger. His eigenstates are harmonic in space and time. The quanta are localized by a central potential. Think of crystals. They follow Bragg's law. The quanta are measured in momentum space in order to determine structure. In this case, the crystal, the diffraction pattern, and the probe are all periodic and harmonic. Quasi crystals are different. How do they diffract? Are all quanta harmonic? Well, here's a representation of the momentum quantum. K is the um, wave vector of the incident probe. The scattering is elastic and uh, the quantum is represented by this red arrow and algebraically by 2 pi over d. Harmonic scattering is well known in the diffraction of crystals. See Physics 101. It's a physical fact, not just a mathematical axiom. And I can compare, compare the crystal with the quasi-crystal. Crystal second phase. A base Bragg's law. n lambda equals 2d sine theta. Lambda is the wavelength of the probe. Here's d, the interplanar spacing. And theta is half the scattering angle. It's the Bragg angle. And n is the order. Here it is, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this instance, Odd orders are suppressed by structure factors. We'll come to that. N is integral, periodic, and harmonic. Quasi-crystals, completely different. N is geometric. 0, 1, tau, tau squared, tau cubed, tau to the fourth. Tau is irrational. It's aperiodic. It's anharmonic. It's everything that uh, crystals are not. We go on and uh, consider uh, the symmetry. The original uh, discovery was a surprise, a metallic phase with long range order and no translational symmetry. How come? By no translational symmetry, they meant f of x is not equal to f of x plus na, contrary to crystals. In fact, the symmetry is logarithmic. f of x equal to x times a times to the power m, it's geometric. We've discussed elsewhere the details, further details in the diffraction. We'll step back to the 19th century physics. Harmony is essential to modern physics, owing to wave particle duality, also known as quantum field theory. And we move on to Einstein's discovery in relativity. This is his formula which we rewrite in simplified units, m squared is omega squared minus k squared, which we break down into two functions. One is conservative, conservative in energy, momentum, uh, mass, electronic charge, etc. And the other is wave-like. Uh, uh, and they're represented by this equation, conser conservative, uh, a conservative function and a responsive function. The responsive function is elastic. It uh, has an intensity equal to 1 in all time and space. The conservative function is an envelope. I'm here to show you how the irrational hierarchic quasi-crystal digitizes and harmonizes this periodic probe. And we map out the road ahead structure, the quasi-structure factor and metric, analyzed with the irrational residue, illustrated with the quasi-block wave, verified by measurement and complete. Here's the unit cell, manganese at the center. Notice that normal to the five-fold axis is a circle of five at atoms, aluminum atoms. Two circles of five aluminum atoms. We'll see those again in a moment. And here's the same unit cell in a cluster. The cluster is edge sharing, not face sharing as in crystals. And the unit edge width stretches to tau squared in the icosahedral cluster and to tau to the power 4 in the icosahedral supercluster. It's extensible indefinitely. 
and the stretching factor is torque squared. <coughs> Here's a stereo stereogram of the principal axes and principal diffraction planes which are normal to the axes. They are all three-dimensional, geometric, simple and complete. Dimensions should not be multiplied without necessity. The harmonic rank is our four. And here's an image due to Bursal and Payne in phase contrast optimum defocus. Here's manganese. The image is in reverse contrast. And uh, here's the unit cell and the cluster on two planes. And the super cluster, uh, one plane of five clusters. So uh, that maps uh, the, our model uh, very well indeed. Here's another map. Uh, the, uh, the cluster contains uh, aluminum atoms on the periphery and uh, manganese atoms inside them, etc., etc. Here are the peripheries. And they again match the phase contrast optimum defocus, as you can see. So we understand the uh, the images, we have to move on to the diffraction so that we can make accurate measurements. We can't use Bragg's law because we don't know the relationship between lambda and theta and d. But we can use the structure factor because it's independent of theta. What it does in the crystal is to project each atom site R in a unit cell onto a selected plane normal and sum the cosine phases to give the structure factor. Sometimes the structure factor is zero, as we saw in the crystalline uh, diffraction pattern earlier on. For the quasar crystal, we make two adjustments. Firstly, because we have multiple D spacings in the structure, as we saw in the images, we include a coherence factor. And secondly, because our unit cell is not periodically repeating, we have to sum over the whole quasar crystal, and we do this iter iteratively. The QSF for a supercluster order P is equal to the QSF order P minus 1 multiplied by this function of the stretching factor. And what is the answer? There is no Bragg diffraction. If there were Bragg diffraction, it would occur on the ordinate axis with CS equals 1, but when we scan CS, we find the quasi Bragg beam. It's the same for the five beams that we uh, pointed out uh, earlier on. And it's the same for all the beams in the original data. That's why we call it a metric. The value is 0.894 and is specific to the icosahedral structure. We can analyze CS. You can, you can uh, identify it from the equations we've shown that it's a, a kind of breathing strain, virtual breathing strain, which causes the structure to expand uh, and the, the, uh, the uh, quasi Bragg diffraction to switch on as the crystal uh, rotates about the quasi Bragg angle. Well, you can show easily that the geometric indices that we saw before are equal to this Fibonacci sequence. Here it is, 1 tor, 1 plus tor, 1 plus 2 tor, 2 plus 3 tor, 3 plus 5 tor. You can prove this by mathematical induction. And you can easily see here that this is the sum of two Fibonacci sequences, one natural, one irrational. You can approximately rationalize this by substituting for tor the value of three halves, and then you get approximate uh, natural value for the, uh, um, for the order. And if you subtract this natural value from the order, you get an irrational residue. This is, has a very important property. It is the exact inverse of the coherence factor that we calculated numerically and independently by the quasi-structure factor. Now I can illustrate it. Here's the probe incident on the either a crystal in blue or a quasi-crystal in red. And when the probe strikes the crystal, it 
forms in the lattice potentials block waves. In this case, two block waves. We're looking in the two beam condition. And in the crystal, the block waves are commensurate with the unit cell and with all unit cells periodically repeating across the crystal. That's the block wave. But these block waves are incoherent with the red intercepts in the hierarchic structure. However, if we take the blue wave and stretch it by the metric function that we just derived, the red wave is coherent with the geometric structure. And I can illustrate that further. The hierarchic quasi-block waves are invariant under all translations a tau to the m. And uh, they're also invariant about these uh, sign oscillations. So we're finding there are dual harmonies in the geometric long range and in the linear short range. We have all the properties needed for diffraction. And with this information, we can, using the metric search, we can adjust the quasi Bragg angle and the measured spacing and go on and measure the uh, quasi lattice parameter. 40 years ago, several of us measured the lattice parameter by assuming Bragg's law because that was all we had at the time. I knew that uh, it, it couldn't be right, but it took me some time to appreciate how to make it right with the metric and the index. And the answer is very important, 0.29 nanometers. And why is that important? Because this is the cross-section of the unit cell. And the lattice parameter is equal to the diameter of aluminum, 0.29 nanometers. This cross-section is also very important in its own right. Uh, the, uh, the structure is due to the precise relationship between the diameters of the solute and solvent atom. There are 15 cross sections at various angles in the icosahedral uh, unit cell, and so it's quasi spherical, as so are all the clusters, etc. etc. Uh, they're tightly packed. So you can think of the quasi crystal as being a tightly packed uh, structure of spheres quasi-spheres, uh, uh, and uh, uh, forming in a uh, icosahedral structure with these unusual diffraction uh, properties. These spheres have holes, they're porous, and here's a hole in a supercluster. Uh, this is the supercluster that we mapped before, with at this at this orientation contains six clusters. Here's a cluster and multiple unit cells. The hole can be filled in this way quite easily by interstitial atoms represented by this unit cell. The volume of the, of the hole is 3% uh, of the volume of the uh, structure proper, icrosahedral structure. So now we can wrap up. The quanta in quasi-crystals are dual harmonic. Following William of Ockham, dimensions should not be multiplied without necessity, nor should fields, nor should quanta. The raison d'etre for quanta is harmony, here demonstrated in quasi-crystals with dual harmonics. And you might observe, gravity is not quantized if it has nothing to harmonize. Moreover, internal motion cannot be ignored because it exists everywhere, including QC diffraction.